Little flamenco guitar, John Hengsmith here on Stringbenders. Roger Bolt, your host, at 3 o'clock straight up. And uh, we're going to be here till 5 o'clock in this next hour. As of right now, I'm going to see if I can get the uh, technology to work here for us and bring on the microphone a uh, gentleman who I met on the Internet, actually, on uh, on Facebook, a luthier from uh, Burns, Tennessee. His name is Gary Clardy. Let me see if I can get this thing to work. I'll pull him up on this here in just a sec here. Let me push that button there, and then I hang this up over here. Hang in there, Gary. We're going to see if this technology actually works here for us. There we go. Okay, let's see. Gary, talk to the telephone for me, buddy. Hello, Roger. By golly, we got you. We All have the right. we have the technology, and we're not afraid to use it right here at <laughs> KOWS, man. It's an absolute pleasure to uh, actually get a chance to to talk about guitar building. I've really admired a lot of the uh, the dreadnought styles that uh, that I see on uh, your Facebook page, and really enjoy the videos that you also post. And the uh, I noticed you. Do not just dreadnought uh, acoustic guitars, but also resonators. And uh, so there's just so All much right. to, to cover here. So welcome to uh, Stringbenders, KOWS here, Gary. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me today, Roger. It's a pleasure to uh, get to talk to you. And I've, uh, you know, admired some of the stuff that you put up and music-wise, and I well, know you. that you're a local picker out there, so it means a lot <laughs> to be able to talk to somebody at actually in the craft of uh, tune smithing and guitar playing. Yeah, well, there was a, uh, a wonderful community of uh, luthiers in the California North Bay, and a lot of them listen to this, uh, this radio show of mine. And uh, so I'm, I'm sure they're going to be interested in, in hearing uh, what it's like. So speaking of what it's like, well, how's the weather back in, uh, in Tennessee right now? Well, we just got through with a little shower, um, which uh, felt good, and... Uh, the skies are clearing up a little bit, and mm -hmm. this time of year it's kind of tricky because you never know when the uh, thun heavy thunderstorms and tornadoes are going to come through when you get some of that uh, thunderstorm action. So, But we had a nice little shower today, and uh, it's mm -hmm. a little muggy, but a uh, beautiful day, actually. I spent some time in Fort Benning, Georgia, back in the uh, mid-60s, and boy... I, I really understand uh, what it's like to go through a summer with that high humidity factor. Is that also true of, uh, of Burns, Tennessee? It is, and I understand the uh, state bird down there at Fort Benning is the mosquito. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct, and boy, are they vicious. But uh, with that humidity factor, how does that affect um, the tone woods that you use in building your guitars? You, you must have a controlled environment for most of the uh, the tone woods that you use, correct? I do. Um, the my air conditioning system keeps it pretty much uh, between forty eight and you know sixty mm -hmm. uh, relative humidity in the shop in the summertime. In the winter time, it's so dry that I have to put I have three humidifiers that I sit around in the shop, and I have to. Um, every couple of days add water to them but i try to keep it between you know around as close to 50 as i can so that uh if, for instance if i ship them to a dry uh climate mm -hmm. they can have a little room to expand from moisture or if i ship it to a drier climate they'll have a little room to go down without uh drawing up and splitting out uh, speaking of tone woods, uh, let's say the um, I was looking at this beautiful maple uh, dreadnought that you were building. Uh, where do you go to find your your woods? Do you uh, have a local um, mercantile there, or do you have to import it, or how does that uh, how does that happen for you? Well, I buy a, a lot of stuff. I have different uh, companies around, uh, such as Blues Creek Guitar, the uh, mm -hmm. Oregon Wildwood. Uh, I buy some off of eBay. I know some wood dealers on there that I can trust to basically to send me decent wood and legal wood. Mm -hmm. 
so I buy from those guys. And, uh, of course, there's some native stuff here like walnut and cherry that I can use. Mm-hmm. And I've built a couple of those in the past. But the main thing is, you know, the moisture content when it comes in or let it reach uh, a pretty low content before you start building and let it acclimate to the shop good. Sometimes I leave wood sitting around for a couple of years. Okay. That was my next question. And what, what is the elapsed time from, you know, the time you bring it into the shop till the time you actually put it on the bench and start working with it? So you figure about a couple of years in, in most cases. Right, and if it's uh, if it's already been kill dried, um, you know, and a moisture content down in the up around you know ten, twelve, or down in single digits, I use it because it'll acclimate very quickly to mm-hmm. whatever the shop is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What got you interested in guitar building in the first place? Were you just originally a player, and then the bug bit you, and off you went? Or how did that work for you? Well, um, I've you know, played since I was about 10, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm mainly a bass player, but I you know, picked up the acoustic um, along the way, and uh, I played some slide and some you know, lead guitar in different bands. Right. Uh, country rock bands, but I had a Martin 12 string here that um, I didn't quite like the neck set on it, and so I was adjusting it one day with a truss rod. I took it to the local music store here, and a buddy of mine adjusted it, and uh, I said, you know, I think that can go just a little bit more, and he said, no, don't touch it. It's fine. I said, no, let me just see, so I grabbed it and gave it a little just a little bit of a twist and broke the truss rod in the neck. Oh, my gosh. So uh, I called Martin and asked them how much they wanted to replace it, and they said, you know, with shipping and everything, it'd be around 800 bucks. Oh, my gosh. So uh, I said, well, how much are truss rods? And they said 12 bucks. So I said, send me one. (laughs) And uh, I got uh, a book. Uh, on guitar repair and uh, bought a heat lamp and some things, set it up and heated the fretboard up and popped it off and popped the uh, truss rod out. Mm -hmm. Put the new truss rod in, cleaned it up, glued it back on in a couple days, I set it back up and it was perfect. It was a lot better than it was before. So So you you uh, had to break it before you could fix it, in other words, huh? Yeah, that's right. (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) You know, I figured, well, if I can do this, I can probably build a guitar. Mm-hmm. So I uh, I think I ordered either four or six Martin kits over a period of about a year mm-hmm. and uh, put them together and just learned the bracing patterns and uh, experimented with, you know, cutting the increasing the body depth a little bit and okay. or cutting it back and mm-hmm. just a bunch of different variations on their guitar kit uh-huh. and uh, got where I could do it. And when I built those kits, I would play one out and someone would want to buy it, so I'd just sell it on the spot. And so I learned the parts. I learned the components. I learned all of those things. And then I'm a mason and carpenter by trade so i've been thinking about it for some time mm-hmm. and i was building a uh, carmax down in memphis and they were giving me a living expense mm-hmm. <laughs> and i was staying with my sister down there so i started buying tools and uh with that and put them in my barn here and then uh finally one day i built you know over a period of time built a shop and i had the tools to outfit it and right I started in building. Wow. And uh, so far, I've only built about, I think, about 60 to date, but uh, I I only have one that I play because, uh, you know, other people are playing the other one. Mm-hmm. And that's how this, uh, this whole thing got out of hand, by breaking up Martin and the way you went, huh? Yeah, I just, <laughs> uh, I loved it. I mean, I loved I'm a civil engineer. I work a job as assistant superintendent of engineering for one of the 
I think it's the fourth largest county here in Tennessee uh, okay. school system, and um, it's just so relaxing to get in there and build and be by myself and, you know, just relieve stress and get my mind totally off of everything and mm-hmm. concentrate on doing a good guitar, uh, good build. So and, you've, uh, uh, you've retired from uh, the Murfreesboro uh, um, Engineering Department or something now, and this is what no, you're doing full-time? I've or? still got two years to go there before I can retire. So. Okay. So um, you managed to squeak in uh, just on the average how many hours a, a week would you say that you would devote towards uh, guitar building? I probably put, um, including uh, on Saturday and Sunday, I would probably have about four. 12 or 14 hours, and then I'll sneak a couple hours here or there throughout the week. So I'd say possibly 20 hours. And uh, But there's a lot of things you can do in 30 minutes or 45 minutes okay. that requires, you know, 8 or 12 hours of drying. Uh-huh. So I can run down and, for instance, stick the uh, ribbon lining in one or break some sides or, you know, put a truss rod in or, mm-hmm. or fret something pretty quickly mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, wait for something set up to move to the next step on it. So by the next afternoon or evening, it'll be ready to go for mm-hmm. whatever I need to do to it. Mm-hmm. One of the most fascinating aspects of guitar building has been the bending of the wood. And it's always fascinated me to uh, to see how that's, how it's gone from a straight, linear piece of grained wood into a shape and form that resembles a guitar and coming off the bottom bout with, with two pieces as it bends and then forms that, that familiar shape that we're, we're used to seeing. Can you kind of give me an overview on, on how that's done? Well, there's a couple of different classical or traditional ways that they're bent, and the old way is to take a pipe, and there's some newer ways or newer uh, techniques on this now that are done with electricity, but they used to take a about a two or three inch steel pipe and uh, fire it with a propane torch mm-hmm. and then uh, get the wood wet and then by rolling this thing around and dragging it across the pipe, uh, slowly bending it with the heat and the water into a round shape. And so I had one of those that was aluminum, it was a chunk of aluminum that uh, would heat up by plugging it into the wall mm-hmm. and turning it on. Mm-hmm. And I bent, you know, maybe three or four, and I got where I could do it decent, but then I decided that I would build a, a bending machine, which... Um, I did build, and I used it for a couple of years, and then I bought one mm-hmm. uh, that was very similar, except it was just a little bit truer and more professional. And I have, it has clamps that has a screw-down clamp on the top at the waist, uh, and then it has some pieces that slide around from the waist out to the end of the bend towards the front bout or the upper bout and the lower bout also. This is the one you've designed now? What's that? This is the machine you've designed? Well, no. uh, I uh, just basically saw a picture of one and built it. And then later when I got a little bit of uh, money, I bought one. Okay. But the... You take two flats of uh, stainless steel, which are very light gauge that are very bendable, Mm -hmm. and you put brown paper on the inside of it and dampen that paper. Then you put your wood on there and dampen it, and then you put another piece of uh, brown paper on top of that, and then there's a silicone blanket that plugs in that goes in there approximately five inches by 36 inches long, and then you put another stainless steel uh, flat on that and stick all of that together into the 
form okay. and the stainless steel keep the uh, wood from popping out or breaking the fibers of the wood as I it's see. bent. Okay. 